Now I'm going to show you what a subdomain is, and then I'll show you how to set one up. So buildwithoutcode.com up here, this is my domain name, right, that you buy from Namecheap or GoDaddy.com. And once you have this domain name, you can then make subsets of this domain, and those are called subdomains. So on my blog, for instance, my blog is blog dot and then buildwithoutcode.com. And so this is uh, useful because if you look at the layout of my blog, it looks completely different from the main part of, of my website. And that's because when you create a subdomain, it's almost as if you're creating a completely different website. After you create the subdomain, you have to reinstall WordPress on that specific subdomain and start it from scratch, basically. The only thing is, so it's literally like having a completely new website, but instead of being a different domain, it's going to share this uh, part, which is called the root domain. It's going to share that main uh, part of the domain name. And so that will help for SEO purposes and just for people to recognize, you know, I'm still, this is still associated with buildwithoutcode.com rather than some completely different uh, domain name. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be nice because, for instance, blog.buildwithoutcode.com serves kind of a different purpose from the main part of the site. And so having a subdomain is nice because it's still associated with it, but I could use a completely different theme and it looks completely different. Um, it serves a different purpose. So uh, if we get Pinterest, for instance, they're an example of someone who uses a subdomain. Here's their regular site. And if you go to blog.pinterest.com, you can see it looks completely different and that they've used a subdomain. Another reason you might want to use a subdomain is for testing purposes. So I created a subdomain called dev.build.code.com. And so if I want to make a change to my main site, I usually test it out on this dev site first. So if I want to change the color scheme, for instance, I'll change it on here first, make sure it looks good, then push it live onto the site that people were visiting so that if it looks really bad, people aren't going to see, oh, it looks really ugly. People won't be able to see that because I'll change it on my dev site first and then make sure it looks good. And then once it looks good, then I'll push it live onto my actual site.